Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning and thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. And uh, it's a joy to be with you as we get to look at scriptures. We get to uh, work our way through the Gospel of Matthew and understand more of Jesus' life and his ministry and what it means to follow him. And always great to have you tuning in. And I'm excited about this passage because uh, I didn't recognize it off the reference, uh, but as I started reading it to prepare for this, I was reminded this is actually the very first passage that I ever preached. Um, and the very first message I prepared for my youth group many, many years ago was off of this passage. So I have not ever had a chance to come back to this passage uh, and teach on it. So this is uh, a little throwback for me as we look at this. And uh, I love this passage because of the implication of it. And uh, so it's Matthew chapter 11, verses 1 through 19. I'm not going to read all of it. 19 verses uh, is a little long, but I'm going to encourage you to go read this. Uh, and basically the context is that John the Baptist uh, sends some messengers to Jesus. John the Baptist has been arrested. He's struggling and, and he's trying to discern like what what's going on. Like I'm struggling with, with the events and, and I've got a question. And so he sends some messengers to Jesus with a question. Um, And so I'll start uh, verse 1 and and read the first few verses. It says, And when Jesus had finished instructing his twelve disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in their cities. And when John heard in prison about the deeds of Jesus, he sent word by the disciples and, and said to him this question. He said, Are you the one that is to come, or shall we look for another? Now, that seems like just an interesting passing question, but this is a massive question because he is asking Jesus, are you the Messiah or should we keep looking for someone else? And, and, and there's so much background here that, that you could get into with John the Baptist and how he spent his life preaching that the Messiah was coming and the Messiah was Jesus. Here's the Son of God who's come into the world and preaching a baptism of repentance for him and and laying the foundation for Jesus' ministry. And here in a place of suffering, in a place of solitude and pain, he's like, man, are, are you the one? But really his question isn't just a question for him, but I think he's a question for all of us. Is Jesus the one that we're looking for? Should we look for another? And that's a question that really every single person who walks the face of this earth has to wrestle with. Now, they may not wrestle with it in those words, in that phrasing, in that order, but we have to ask the question, is Jesus the Messiah or do we look for something else to live our life for? Now, Jesus doesn't get into a theological defense. He doesn't start saying, well, you know, I fulfilled this prophecy in the book of Isaiah and this one from here, but he he goes a different direction. Verse 4, And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Now he goes on after these messengers leave to talk to the people that are there with him and remind them of some prophecies, to remind them of the importance of trusting in him in faith. But I want to ask you, Have you trusted in Jesus? Are you looking for something else to live your life for? See, Jesus, uh, he he answers the question with the experiential, the evidence. He said, hey, I'm changing lives. Like there's miracles happening. There's fulfillment of the prophecies and how I'm living my life. What more evidence are you looking for? And the truth is that Jesus is as real and active today as he was the day he uttered these words. He is changing lives. He is performing miracles. He is at work in our world. There's experiential evidence all around us that he is real. The other thing that we see here is that we have a choice to make. Are we going to trust in Jesus for salvation and live our life seeking and following him, or are we going to look for other things to fill our life with? And this is first for salvation. Do we put our hope and our trust in him or do we put our hope and trust in our own efforts of being a good person and doing good things and helping people and and being religious because that's always going to fall short. It's not just for salvation. It's also for for the guidance and wisdom of our life. Are we going to trust in our own wisdom? Are we going to trust in the perfect wisdom of God that's laid out for us in scripture that guides us and teaches us and corrects us? But also... Are we going to trust in Jesus for the purpose of our life, or are we going to look for something else? 
See, there's so many things that we can fill our life for, for success, for money, for fame, for accomplishments, for comfort, for peace. But all those are going to let us down. But when we put our trust in Jesus and, and our purpose is in following him and glorifying him with our life, we will continue to find joy and satisfaction and fulfillment in that. But it comes back to that question that we have to answer. Is Jesus the one who is to come or are we going to look for another? I pray today that you would trust in Jesus. You wouldn't look for anything else to live your life by, to, to, to find your wisdom and, and guidance by, and especially nothing else for salvation because everything else in those categories will let us down except for trusting in Jesus. So I pray that you would see the works of Jesus, that you would see the work for him on the cross for you, how he loves and cares for you, and that you would trust in him and not look for anything else. I hope that you have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.